The last topic of discussion when it came to Hollywood movies came in the form of critiquing angry fans who didn't like the idea of certain countries being portrayed as the villain. Due to popular request, today's topic will add a third country to that list. Oh boy, time to see how well populists will respond to the regime of their Ayatollah being criticized because they have done so multiple times in the past. But just like Russia and China, Iran also engages in some type of film censorship to both foreign and domestic films. When my films were previously screened abroad, it was because the Iranian government allowed for that to happen. After a certain time, a law was passed by the Ministry of Islamic Culture and Guidance, which requires movies to get accreditation in order to be shown outside the country. After that, most of my films didn't get a permit, or they were exposed to censorship. And this is the reason there are delays in my film releases now. Iran rejects movies on many themes. Not only do they ban movies on nationalistic lines like Russia and China do, but they also ban movies and other media on historical and religious lines. Not only do they ban them, but multiple populists will show their anger at the simple act of screening such a movie. It's a little annoying to see how they ramble on their movie banning skills, but it's also quite hilarious. But here are some examples of their ramblings against historic movies. Alexander is a 2004 movie starring Colin Farrell and Angelina Jolie, which portrays the life of Alexander the Great. It was attacked by pro-Iran activists for portraying a sympathetic depiction of Alexander the Great, a historical figure hated in Iran for destroying imperial Persian greatness. The movie 300, which stars Gerard Butler, deals with the Battle of Thermopylae, where 300 Spartan warriors took on thousands of Persian troops under the Persian king Xerxes I. From its opening, the movie attracted controversy over its portrayal of Persians. Not only did pro-Iranian critics slam the movie, but the Iranian government denounced and banned the film. Even the Iranian Academy of Arts submitted a formal complaint against the film to UNESCO, labeling it as an attack on the historical identity of Iran. Even Iran's cultural advisor to President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad called the film an American attempt for psychological warfare against Iran. A promotional clip from the latest Hollywood blockbuster to take a story from history, but with unexpected consequences. The finest soldiers. Visitors come from all over the world to the British Museum and other great museums to learn something about human history. It's a marvellous thing, but sometimes, of course, history is very far from non-controversial. And in fact, at this very moment, there's a political controversy brewing about one particular story in history and how it's interpreted. Go now, run along and tell your Xerxes he faces free men here. Not slaves. No. Not slaves. <laughs> Come and get them! In 480 BC, a small Greek force led by 300 Spartan warriors fought the invading Persian army of King Xerxes to a standstill at Thermopylae before being surrounded and overwhelmed. Now, a new Hollywood action movie, 300, is recreating the battle, and it's led to an angry reaction in Iran where political groups say the depiction of the ancient Persians as savage and barbaric is offensive demonization of today's Iranians. I can't take it seriously. It, it's a, a ludicrous piece of fantasy. Um, but it is something that unfortunately has people in it called Greeks and called Persians. And today there are Greeks and Persians. And this is an appropriation of another culture's um, heritage and history. A spokesman for Iran's President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has attacked what he said was cultural and psychological warfare against the country, and some Iranian MPs have urged other Muslim countries to ban the film. Few people are likely to have seen 300 in Iran, where foreign films are subject to censorship, of course. Even so, clips have circulated on the internet, and pirate DVDs have been reported. But there has been a lively response online, with a petition to the filmmakers among the protests. And while internationally 300 is proving good box office, among Iranians it's hit particular sensitivities. The Iranian government has been offended, obviously, because they think Americans are planning to invade Iran, and this is a, a a psychological preparation for that invasion. And the Iranian community, because it represents uh, 
them as animals and, and subterranean creatures and they don't like to see themselves in that way. The film's director, Zack Snyder, based 300 on a graphic novel by the American artist Frank Miller. The film has been an instant box office success in the States, but Snyder says he didn't mean it to cause any political offence. I didn't mean to like insult anyone as a fantasy film. And I, I, would, I, I really, I hope honestly that people who, you know, feel if the film has like, in whatever way it insulted them, that they realize that I, that's not what I intended in any way. So I just hope that that gets through to them. There will be no glory in your sacrifice. I will erase even the memory of Sparta from the histories. 300 has divided the film critics, whose comments have ranged from superbly preposterous to war propaganda of the crudest kind. All good for the box office, of course. 300 owes much to video game culture, and you wouldn't take it for nuanced academic history, of course. But then, films can have a greater influence on their audiences. Ever since the hostage, uh, American hostage crisis of 1979, particularly Iranians who were, who were living in the United States stopped calling themselves Iranians and referred to themselves as Persians. Uh, and Americans with a legendary knowledge of uh, world geography had no idea where this Persia was, somewhere near Transylvania, uh, uh, perhaps. Uh, and then, quarter of a century, they kept calling themselves Persians, and in comes Zack Snyder's and blasts the Persians out of, uh, out of humanity and represents them as these creatures. But the historical movie that angered Iran the most was the 2012 movie Argo with Ben Affleck. It portrays the Iranian Revolution in 1979 and the hostage crisis at the American Embassy in Tehran. Notable Iranian figures such as Abdul Hassan Banisdar, the then foreign minister during the crisis, criticized the film for not showing the scene where certain cabinet members advocated for freeing the hostages. Many other people slammed the movie for portraying Iran in such a negative way. Not only was this movie banned, but the government threatened to sue Hollywood for its portrayal of Iran. To a movie producer, this might actually sound like the title of a very bad movie, The Islamic Republic of Iran versus Hollywood. But the way things are shaping up, there could technically be a chance that we could see an Iran-Hollywood matchup in court. That is because the Iranian government has announced plans to sue Hollywood over the Oscar-winning movie Argo, about the CIA's rescue of several American citizens during the 1979 hostage crisis. The Iranian government never liked this movie. Officials in Tehran said it was CIA Washington propaganda designed to undermine the Islamic Republic of Iran by distorting the reality of Iran, depicting the country as a dark and hateful place and fueling Iranophobia, the fear of Iran. When it comes to themes that collide with religious views, the country bans media that doesn't mix well because of its theocratic rule. As a result, many domestic movies in Iran are banned, but foreign movies that portray secular music, wearing short sleeves, including on men, holding hands, men and women in the same bed, anyone in the same bed, and of course, mocking the Islamic faith are also pretty much banned. Any movie that wishes to be shown in Iranian cinemas must be first submitted to the Ministry of Culture and Islamic Guidance to see if they support Muslim morals. There can be added or retracted scenes, or they can just reject the movie altogether. Next up, the film must go through another examination commission, and finally, the cinemas in Iran all independently choose which movies can enter this, their screenings or not. Certain movies such as Zoolander, Fifty Shades of Grey, Sex and the City, The Exorcist, and many more have been banned in Iran by this way. And along with criticism of the Islamic faith, criticism of the nation and its government is also banned. That includes anything that shadows the country or its national policies. The 1991 movie Not Without My Daughter is a biographical depiction of Betty Mahmoudi, an American citizen who was forced to live with her abusive husband in Tehran. Not only did the Iranian government criticize it, but many journalists and moviegoers did too. Zero Days is a 2016 documentary which which deals with the U.S. and Israel launching a cyber attack on Iran's nuclear program. The movie received a lot of hate from pro-Iranian populists. American Assassin is a 2017 movie with Dylan O'Brien and Charlotte Vega, which also deals with Iran getting nuclear weapons, which didn't sit too well with Middle Eastern populists. The 2011 
Transformers Dark of the Moon movie was hated amongst Iranians solely for the fact that one particular scene, and only one, shows Autobots raiding an illegal nuclear power plant. The 2015 Israeli comedy Atomic Falafel also generated anger amongst pro-Iranian viewers because it portrayed a potential comedic war between Iran and Israel. The 2019 movie The Operative, which stars Diane Kruger, depicts foreign agents infiltrating Iran's nuclear weapons program, which caused a loud reaction. But the funniest one came from the game Battlefield 3, which shows a war between the US and Iran, with the latter being an evil and provoking force. The game was actually banned in Iran, despite not even being distributed there. EA doesn't sell there because, as we all know, it's a pretty volatile market. However, pirated copies of the game have made their way onto the scenery, and the Iranian government feared that the game would undermine its authority. But, like, how do they even come to this conclusion? Now I guess everyone gets the picture, so I'm not going to respond to the Iranian government, but rather to these pro-Iranian populists. It's just a movie, so don't watch it if you don't like it. It's especially hypocritical to hear them call out propaganda when Iran makes its own anti-American movies. Persian Gulf War II is a 2017 computer animated movie which portrays the US military invading Iran through the Persian Gulf and fighting the Iranian Navy commanded by Qasami Soleimani. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It portrays the Americans as aggressors while the Iranians bravely defend their home. In 2013, Iran also released a movie which is quite literally called US Iran War. Yeah, that's literally what their level of creativity is. And it depicts an aerial war between the US and Iran, which the Iranians win, of course. Iran has also done the same thing with music, a song called We Will Resist to the Last Drop of Blood, passionately sings about how the people of Iran fight off a US invasion and get revenge for the downing of Iran Air Flight 655. Another song called America Equals Death was also released in 2019 by the singer Hamad Zamani and the sole purpose of the song is basically to bring down and trash talk the US. Yeah, I truly wonder what upcoming movies will show and how people will react to them. Sensibility is different in different parts of the world, but entertainment is international. Sometimes when the two mix, bad things happen. So, have you guys ever met someone that was offended by a movie or a video game? I'm sure at some point in your life the answer was yes. Let me know about your experiences.